Welcome back to HANA Basics for Developers. We're going to continue looking at specialized use cases within the XSJS programming environment. Uh, in this video, we want to take a look at something that we call SQL CC, or Connection Configuration. In XS Classic, we used a SQL CC to control how we connected to the database. Because as we've seen with XSJS, you just automatically get a connection to the database. You don't specify um, a connection string or anything like that. You don't specify username and password. In XS Classic, you were automatically authenticated and connected to the database with your application user, which meant if you wanted to substitute with a technical user, you had to use the special configuration approach. Now in XS Advanced, as we've seen, we automatically connect to the database of the container, the primary container that we're bound to. That automatically is going to connect us with a technical user. So some of the need for SQL CC is lessened. But you can imagine, what if you don't want to connect to your primary container? What if you want to connect to a different uh, schema, for instance, maybe a non-container schema? or you want to connect with a different user ID than that of your technical user, maybe a dedicated database ID that you've manually created. Well, all those things are possible, but allow uh, by uh, basically reusing the concept of the user provided service, we've already seen how that can be used in the database module to create synonyms and uh, configuration to connect to a foreign schema or container. We can use that same concept and attach it directly to our Node.js module and then within XSJS control which database connection that we're using in code and switch from our primary database connection to a secondary database connection. Uh, so let's, uh, let's see how this scenario plays out. Let's go back to the web IDE and uh, close out some of the stuff from our previous exercise here. And uh, what we want to do is uh, we can actually uh, reuse the user provided service that we already created back in our database uh, videos where we created a user provided service that connected us to the s -Lite schema. And we want to do the same thing here. Instead of creating synonyms and going through our, our, uh, our container and, and using synonyms to hop over to s -Lite, we're going to create a secondary database connection and allow XSJS code to connect directly to s -Flight with our technical user. So it won't be running as the container technical user, but one that we directly specify. So it just gives us more options. And what we can see here is we've, we've got this existing cross schema s -Flight 00. Uh, we can even go in and we can see the, the details of it here that we connected with a certain um, uh, technical user that's CUPS s -Flight. Uh, we're connecting back to our, our local database, and by the port, we're controlling which, um, uh, which tenant that we're going into. We created this user-provided service using the, um, using the wizard. If we were to create a user-provided service directly for, um, for SQL CC without having ran the wizard, we'd just come in here like we did in the previous video and just do a new instance of user-provided service. And, um, you know, earlier we did this uh, to just create a port host and tags for our images connections at Library Congress, but we could just as easily ta uh, type in the host uh, port user password driver uh, to connect us to the, uh, to the HANA database as well via user-provided service. All right, uh, so let's return to the web IDE. And what we want to do is, you know, just even though we're reusing the same user provided service, I'm going to go ahead and create another resource for this. Um, just so we, we are going to use the same user provided service, but we're going to use it in two different places for two different things. And I don't want to reuse the generated uh, resource. I could technically, but just for the purposes of organization, documentation, and better reuse over time, I'm going to create another resource for this. And um, I'm going to call it uh, cross schema s -flight. And it is going to be an existing service. And I need to create the service name entry. This is where we give it the actual physical service name. 
Once again, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to cut and paste it. Cut down on the chance of making an error. There we are. And there are no properties that I need to maintain for this. Just that one parameter. And I go ahead and save it. And once again, I need to add this as a dependency to my XSJS module. Let's refresh the drop-down list boxes by switching to the code editor and back. And then I can come over here to XSJS. I can add a new requires entry. And from the drop-down list box, I'll choose this new cross schema S flight resource that we just created. And we will save that. And that's all that we need to adjust here. Very simple. Now, we need to go back to our bootstrap code in the server JS. If you remember the very first exercise uh, several ago where we introduced the concept of XSJS, we saw how the wizard wrote most of this bootstrap code for us, and it configured our primary connection to HANA. We actually uh, want to just copy this because we want something very similar. We're going to add another connection, a secondary connection here. So we're going to say configure uh, SQL CC secondary HANA for direct S-Flight access, all right? And uh, we're going to load the service, um, but um, now instead of loading it into uh, HANA, and we don't want it to be our primary connection, by loading it into the HANA area of the options, that would make it our primary HANA database connection. We don't want to disrupt that. We want to keep our primary connection. We're going to give it a specific name here. So we're going to add it in configuration. It's called xsjs.sqlcc config. All right. And then the tag, uh, we're actually not going to load it via tag. We'll, we'll load it via direct name here. So um, I'll call it, I need to put in the specific name, cross schema. spell that's flight zero zero and curly brackets there we are that looks good then we can keep the same error content that we had there so all we've really done is we're loading it into a different area so as not to overwrite the main HANA connection we give it a specific name that we'll reference later and we're not loading it by tag we're loading it by specific name uh, uh, the actual service name there Okay, so let's save that. And now let's go to our XSJS folder and uh, let's create a new file. And remember earlier we had the who am I? Um, I'll show you the code that it had in it in just a second here. What we want to do is basically though make a copy of it. So the original who am I? Remember, this will use the primary database connection by default because we didn't specify any connection um, parameters here. And then it's going to get the current user at the database level and the application user. We're basically want, going to want to do the same thing here. So let's cut and paste this code. But we want to make one important uh, change here is when we make the database connection, uh, we want to tell it... Uh, let's use SQL CC. So we're going to tell it we want to use SQL CC, and then we have to pass it some parameters here, uh, mainly the name of the configuration option where it can find the SQL CC configuration, which will, you know, in turn point it to our user provided service, and that's how to know how to connect. And then we can add other options. For instance, we can turn on uh, connection pooling. Uh, for more efficient, if we were making a lot of parallel requests to the service, uh, we would reuse the existing connection, not have to make a, a new connection every time. It would pull it out of the pool. But we'll keep the logic the same here so that we can compare these two applications side by side. Uh, we'll save this, and uh, we will rerun my XSJS service. And once again, we change the MTA YAML, so it's going to have to do a full deployment. So we're going to wait, have to wait here just a little bit while it does that. Finished starting back up with our changes. And remember, this is going to be the key here. Our select current user from dummy, that's going to tell us what our user ID at the database level that our SQL is running as. Um, let's go over here to test this. 
Remember, test it via the web module and xsjs. Let's test the the old one first, the whoami.xsjs. And notice the uh, current database user, it's still our container technical user. So we haven't changed the primary connection. If I don't specify any connection parameters, it's going to connect with that primary connection. We haven't disrupted that. But now let's test our whoami underscore SQL CC, which will not use the primary connection, but use this secondary connection that we've configured. So let's come here, SQL CC. And I've made a mistake somewhere. Uh, let's see xsjs.sqlcc underscore config. Let's see if I can find my mistake real quick. xsjs sql cc underscore config. I did not see it. Oh, I see what I did. I did make a mistake here. I should have been a little bit more careful when I um, when I adjusted this code. I want my uh, I want to load this into sorry about this. HANA options HANA SQL CC. That's very important. It was just loading it into the main option settings. We want it to be a child of, of the HANA information. This secondary connection hand, uh, hangs underneath the, the options of the, of the main HANA options. So uh, I kind of messed up there. I'm more than kind of messed up. Uh, sorry about that. So XS environment get services and we can take that off there. Um, yeah, I should have been a little bit more careful when I looked at my coding, but you know, uh, I kind of like leaving my mistakes in. Um, it, it shows some common mistakes that, that you can make. I'm sure many people would be tempted just to cut and paste the HANA section and adjust the, the target there as I did, but it shows you, uh, it also points out something that, you know, the SQL CC, the secondary connections, they are child, uh, child options of the main connection. So they are loaded as part of that, uh, that main connection. And we can have multiple SQL CC uh, connections. So we can have multiple secondary connections. They would all get loaded uh, into this uh, SQL CC area. Uh, now, because we only changed code, I can restart this and it should restart very quickly. There we are. And now let's come over here and test. And this time it works, thankfully. Um, and what we see as opposed to the earlier example, the, uh, the first one that used the primary connection, now our secondary connection, we see the user ID is the CUPS S flight. So uh, a user that we created, a technical user that we manually created, not one that was managed by the system automatically created by the container. Um, you know, and if I, I didn't pull in the, the schema, we would see that the default schema is S flight. And, you know, this gives us the ability to connect at the uh, application server level to an existing schema. I didn't have to create synonyms and, and things like that. We're not going through the container. We're actually not connected to the container at all in this case. And just uh, because I screwed up there uh, on the uh, on the coding, I want to make sure, I want to prove to you that I did not break the, uh, the original connection, yes, it is still here. Um, the main HANA options still works. We still get connected to the container and we've hung our secondary connection as an option underneath the, the main connection. And through code at our uh, XSJS level, we can choose which database connection that we want to utilize.